Welcome to this series of Shiurim on the Rambam's Hilchis Kiddush HaChodesh. In this introductory lesson, we will explore the progression of the sun and the moon in relation to the earth and the mazolois, the ecliptic. We will define Moilad, the new moon, explain why we make a leap year, adding an extra month, what causes the differences in the times of sunrise and sunset, the different seasons over the course of the year, and other subjects that will assist us in the comprehension of Hilchis Kiddush HaChodesh. This is the way the universe appears according to the Torah. The earth is in the center, the moon, the sun, and all the stars revolve around the earth continuously. In the third chapter of Hilchis Yisoyde HaTorah, the Rambam states that there is a sphere a galgal in the heavens that is not visible. It revolves each day from the east to the west and causes all existence to revolve around the earth. The daily revolution of this sphere is an ongoing expression of Hashem's might and power. This sphere is called the galgal hayoimi, the sphere that revolves each day. In addition, there are spheres in which the sun and the moon revolve. This represents the sphere of the sun. It too is not visible. The Galgal Hayoimi causes this sphere and the sun itself to revolve around the earth. In addition to the revolution from east to west that is caused by the Galgal Hayoimi, the sphere of the sun has an independent and opposite motion from west to east. The two patterns operate simultaneously. The Galgal Hayoimi causes the sun with its sphere to revolve from east to west, while the independent movement of the sphere of the sun causes it to move from the west to the east. The moon also has its own sphere. The Galgal Hayoimi also causes this sphere to continuously revolve from east to west each day. Nevertheless, the sphere of the moon also has its own independent movement, which causes the moon to move from west to east. A sphere within a sphere. There are more spheres, Galgalim, which exist. However, in order to understand Hilchis Kiddush HaChodesh, our focus will be the sun, the moon, and the Galgal HaMazolis, the ecliptic. Let us observe the movement of the sun and the moon when their spheres are not seen. Here, we see the position of the sun and the moon at 7 a.m. in Eretz Yisrael. These are chalakim. There are 1,080 chalakim in an hour. At this time, the sun and the moon are found at zero degrees in the mazel of Taleh. Now, let us proceed one day arriving at the same time the following morning. Now the sun is found at an inclination of one degree in the Galgal HaMazolis. What has happened is, the Galgal HaYoyimi has caused the sun to make an entire revolution from east to west around the earth. However, in that time, the sun's own sphere has moved at one degree eastward. The moon has reached an inclination of approximately 13 degrees because its sphere has moved it eastward at an even faster pace. Now let's proceed another 10 days further. Again, it's 7 in the morning. The sun has reached an inclination of approximately 12 degrees and the moon an inclination of approximately 160 degrees in relation to the Galgal Hamazolos. The sages of the early eras divided the Galgal Hayoimi into 12 divisions, naming each division according to a constellation. These are the 12 Mazolos. Using them, we can define the place of the sun in the heavens. For example, here, the sun is in the Mazol of Taleh. The moon is now in the Mazol of Besula. The Galgal Hamazolos, called the ecliptic in astronomical terms, is like any circle, composed of 360 degrees. Thus, the location of the sun and the moon 
can be identified by citing the angle in which it is found. Each of the mazolois encompasses 60 degrees, beginning from the mazol tale at zero degrees. This was the sun's location at the time of its creation. The location of the sun in the Galgal HaMazolois has an effect on the times of sunrise and sunset and also on the seasons of the year. The angular distance between the sun and the moon has an effect on the time of the Moilad, the new moon, each month. Based on these concepts, we can comprehend the subject of a leap year. The plane of the Mazolis is inclined at an angle of 23.5 degrees to the equator here on Earth. Thus, when the Sun is in the Mazol Sartan, it is northerly with relation to the Earth. When it is in the Mazol of Keshes, or Gdi, it is southerly with relation to the Earth. When the Sun enters the Mazol Sartan, its daily orbit is inclined 23.5 degrees north of the equator. When the sun enters the Mazel Gdi, its daily orbit is inclined 23.5 degrees south of the equator. When the sun enters the Mazel Tale, its daily orbit is aligned exactly with the equator. Over the course of half a year, the sun rises northward on its path in the Galgal Hamazolis. And over the course of half a year, the sun descends southwards on its path in the Galgal Hamazolis. Its change of position brings about the variation of the seasons of the year. The earth is surrounded by its atmosphere. As the rays of the sun pass through the atmosphere, they are filtered somewhat until they reach the earth. The greater the angle between the sun and the earth, the greater the distance the sun's rays must pass through the atmosphere. As a result, the filtering process of the atmosphere has a greater effect on the sun's rays, cooling them off. In the summer, the sun is in a northerly position. Therefore, the angular distance between it and the northern hemisphere is less. Hence, the sun's rays shine more directly, producing warmer weather. When the sun is in a southerly position, the opposite is true. The sun's rays reach the southern hemisphere more directly. Therefore, there it's summer. While in the northern hemisphere, the angular distance is greater, producing winter. When the sun is in the Mazel Tale, the rays of the sun reach the north and the south, at the same angle. Therefore, as the Rambam writes, the spring season begins when the sun enters the Mazol Tale. The location of the sun in the sphere of the Mazolois also has an effect on the times of the rising and the setting of the sun. A person standing on the Earth's surface sees half of the heavens. In Hebrew, the term for the sky is Kipas Hashamayim, literally the dome of the heavens. This represents the dome of someone standing in Yerushalayim. At the spring equinox, when the sun is in the Mazel Tale, it is aligned with the equator. As a result, the sun sets on the western horizon at 6 in the evening. When the sun is in a northerly Mazel like Sartan, it sets later on the western horizon. Hence, the days of the summer are longer. Conversely, when the sun is in a southerly mazel like Gdi, it sets earlier on the western horizon. Hence, the days of the winter are shorter. Likewise, regarding sunrise, when the sun is in a northerly mazel like Sartan, it appears on the eastern horizon earlier. When the sun is in a southerly mazel like Gdi, it appears on the eastern horizon Later, a person standing on the equator will see the sun set at the same time, 6 o'clock every day of the year. A person in a very northerly or very southerly location, by contrast, will at times see the setting of the sun at extremely early or late times. Indeed, there may be days when the sun will not set or rise at all. By the way, 
you can see from this representation that due east is always toward the equator, no matter where you stand on the earth. The Moilad, the new moon. It's seven in the morning in Eretz Yisrael. Both the sun and the moon are located at zero degrees, the beginning of Mazal Taleh. After one day, the sun has moved approximately one degree. The moon has moved approximately 13 degrees, and there are slightly more than 12 degrees between them. After two days, the difference has increased by another 12 or so degrees. After 10 days, the difference is greater. Another 10 days, the difference is far greater. After 29 days, the moon has almost reached the sun. And in 29 and a half days, it reaches it. This is the moment of the moilad. There are 29 and a half days between one moilad and another. Thus, if in one month the moilad took place in the morning, in the next month it will take place in the evening. This alternating pattern will continue. Now we can understand the concept of a leap year when a month is added. Pesach must fall after the spring equinox. In other words, after the sun has entered Mazal Taleh. Let's begin a new year with the sun and the moon at zero degrees in Mazal Taleh. This is the beginning of spring. Let's proceed to the next Moilad. The sun has progressed to almost the end of the Mazal of Taleh, but it is still before the Mazal Shor. By the next Moilad, the sun has proceeded to almost the end of the Mazal Shor, but this time it is further away from the next Mazal of Teumim. This pattern will continue throughout the year. After 12 lunar months, the sun will be 10 or 11 degrees from returning to Mazal Taleh. If Rosh Chodesh Nisan is declared, then spring will begin on the 11th of Nisan. In another 12 months, the sun will be 20 or so days from spring season. In order to celebrate Pesach in the spring, another month of Adar must be added. This concludes our introductory lesson to Hilchus Kiddush HaChodesh. In the following lessons, we will explain the concepts as they appear in the Rambam, chapter by chapter, starting with chapter 11.